Hello, so bonus footage, bonus footage. Uh, we're currently sat at Booker Airfield. Um, I'll show you where that is in a moment on the map. And we're going <laughs> to... Good timing, Pippa, well done. Uh, and we're going to be doing a pre-positioning flight down to Shoreham, um, where the next lesson is going to be based out of for doing some VFR stuff. Um, so this is, yeah, this is bonus footage. It's a bit of cross country, but um, really I'm not doing anything particularly exciting here. And I'm not going to be talking too much about how I'm doing it all. That will be in the lesson. But for anyone interested, this is uh, sort of what we're doing. So uh, let me put on the relevant screen. And you'll have to excuse me, I'm going to be on and off my phone at the moment because I am doing a bit of work as we speak. Um, so just give me two ticks. There we go. Uh, so what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? And when do we want it? We want the centre screen and we want it now. And why am I not seeing it? Not there. Where? Oh, centre screen. Why is it in messages? Uh, you don't want to see that. That's just work. Right, okay, so Booker is uh, up here. You can currently see the aircraft position there. And Shoreham is all the way down here on the south coast um down near brighton so we've got to avoid london the london um zone so if i put on oh we've got information on oh it's because it's on the other screen mm. this is really small i'm sorry I, I don't know how to change that so if i just hover over here what we can see in this information panel is within this boundary whoop, that's going all the way around there we've got class a airspace for the london um tma so that is from 2500 feet uh, and upwards um so we can't we, we've got to be below that if we go into that airspace ideally we want to actually go around it uh, this then box round here, very similar, except it's three and a half thousand feet upwards. So we've got a bit more space to fly. Uh, there's a load of guys with sort of fly B call signs, but they've missed an eon doing a bit of a gravy train there. That's interesting. Uh, and then this box here, you can see, hopefully you can see there, uh, four and a half thousand feet here. Uh, back down, uh, sorry, up to 5,000 here, 5,500. So ideally, we want to go around here, and then um, this is 5,500, so down to sort of Goodwood area, and then we'll come into Shoreham along uh, the south coast. And that just keeps us well out of London. We are going to be online, uh, so we do actually have traffic to worry about, uh, and we are visible as well, so we're fully online um, Doing all the proper stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, out of Booker. We're going to go straight for the Compton VOR uh, here, the VOR DME there. Then we're going to cut straight down to Goodwood, um, and then from there we can just follow the coast into Shoreham. We'll land at Shoreham, fuel up, and then that will be the end of this pre-positioning video. Um, the video that will actually be the the lesson itself. Uh, will be from Shoreham. We'll do some flying. You can sort of see some of the planning I've done around there already. And then we'll do a return flight after the lesson uh, back up into Shoreham as another little bit of a bonus. Bit of footage. So let me just see why my thing for work has not worked, ironically. Uh, so I got all the shebang, waiting for connection. Right, okay, stuff it, that's future me's problem. 
So you'll recognise this if you're a air cadet. We're in, of course, the Grob. Have I just picked a heron? Or is this actually the tutor that I wanted? No, we've picked a Grob Heron. Never mind. So this is the Grob 115E Heron, as opposed to the 115D Tutor. And the difference being we've got a variable pitch prop. Um, that's my bad. I thought I picked the Tutor, but never mind. Uh, but near as damn, it's the same. So what do we want to do? Right, well, first of all, let's get ourselves fired up. So, brakes are on, battery is on, mixture can go to rich, uh, prop can go to low, and we will do, nav lights can come on, Peter we don't need that just yet, we don't need the avionics on just yet, here, either, here, what's it supposed to mean, uh, fuel pump, can come on and starters uh, sorry magnetos can come on so clear prop parking brake can come on okie dokie Avionics Master can come on, and we are online, so we will go over to Unicom because we're going to be staying outside of controlled airspace on 122 Decimal 8. Yeah, came up, yes, it did. Fun, dandy dozy. There's the GPS, I'll be leaving that turned off. We don't need that. Um, and our red beacon light should have already been on. Whoops, some daisies. Uh, so, check the magnetos, looking for an RPM drop. And we're all good on that. Excellent. just get the uh, engine warmed up a bit. So pitch trim, set pitch trim for takeoff. Skibbity do something like a better one. And we're going to be going to Compton 114 decimal 35. 114 decimal 35. Probably won't pick it up on the ground. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, and we're VFR, so we want a squawk of 7,000. I can't quite see that. Transponder, and go to ground. Excellent. Come to, we don't need that. That can stay off skis for now. Uh, come one we want. Don't need any of that. So, canopy closed. I'm not going to be doing the full, full checklists. Um, I haven't got my crib sheet with me. Uh, so what's the weather at Booker looking like? Dot WX, EG, Tango, Bravo. No such weather profile. Oh, you uh, um, okay, right, wait a minute. What I can do is because we are actually properly, properly online, is I can give you this little map in to corner. Hmm. It's not going to be good enough. So you can see we do have some air traffic on at Gatwick, tower ground delivery, and at Heathrow we've got Heathrow director on. So we're going to be staying well out of their airspace. Uh, so right, let me get the weather for Booker. Uh, 
where we currently are. Current location, that's what So, Q and H is 1029. Crikey. 10. Two nine. Blimey, yeah, that is high. Um, temperature seven degrees, lovely and warm. Pito coming on, and winds are forty sixteen knots. Now, I can't remember. Uh, zero four zero sixteen knots, should I say? So we want to be going off zero six, which is to the end of there. Okay. Well, that'll do. So let's get on our diddly daddly way. So, prop. Give it a bit of ripums. And we can leave for taxi. Oh, I'm not used to being in this seat. Can I get in the other seat? Oh, I can. Oh, no, not very good. No, right, never mind. This seat it is then. Uh, and we're going to be going to Compton, which is going to be roughly on a radial of... ...50, something like that. Uh, no, we're not likely to be picking it up yet. As I say, I'm not doing full checklists and everything like that today. We will do that at some point, but it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm being super mega lazy. Right, so we're on the runway, so we can put the white strobe on and landing lights can cut on. Try and maintain something straight on the runway. As you know, I'm not the best at taxiing in the world. And we'll do a bit of a Ryanair high speed taxi down the runway. Ryan Scare, should I say. Why is it talk staring to the right? That's weird. Anyway. Uh, we don't really need all the runway, but we're going to take it. Uh, transponder can come on. Oops. On. There we go. Thank you, please. And I'll just make sure that fat sim is mode C. There we go. Mode Charlie. Turned on a dime, didn't it? Actually, somewhat like the proper aircraft. Okay, so we would turn into wind here and do a run up check, but uh, I'm being lazy, so max props, max mixture, and run up test to 2200 ribbons. Just overshot my smidge. Yeah, that's okay. That's looking brilliant. Lovely jubbly. Okay, flaps. <laughs> I was about to say flaps one then. Flaps take off. We're not in an Airbus, Simon. We're not in an Airbus. 
Um, okay, seat welts, yeah, whatever, all the good things. Trim is set. Uh, we're on both for the tanks. Lights are on, all good there. Uh, T's and P's, temperatures and pressures are all good. The pressure will go up when we run up. Um, fuel, we've got about 75% fuel, which should hopefully be enough to get us there. Um, so, let's go. Keep the rippings in the green. T's and P's are good. 60 knots, a rotate. Up we go. Massive lag spike, thank you. And let's get ourselves trimmed for climb. There we go, we can see we've picked up the VOR because this suddenly sprung into action. And we know that Compton is uh, roughly southwest of us, so we can start a bit of a climbing turn. Bring the nose down a smidge. And we're going to cruise at around about three and a half thousand feet. So let's get ourselves pointing in the vague direction of where we want to go. Wait. Stop it. Oh, really? Pepper, that is disgusting. She's just brought in a dead mouse and dumped it on top of a load of the, my electronics. <laughs> oh well. Uh, I'm just going to turn slightly north of southwest, so more west southwest, just to avoid that uh, that bit of airspace. I'm going to have to sort that out in a sec. She's just going to go nuts with it. Okay, so we're up, up and away. We'll lean out a touch and we'll reduce our prop for 2200 which means we can increase our throttle should have done that earlier to be honest hang on which control was just oh, oh gap Downrig radar. Uh, as I say, we're not going to be going anywhere near that. So landing lights can come off now. We don't need them. Nice thing about the grub is we can see all around. Flaps up. Look at that. Oi, lovely. Let's actually get trimmed a little bit here. And we're coming up nicely, so we'll drop off fuel flow down to 40. Thanks. I'll tell you what, no, we'll go full throttle and then I'll lean out for 40. That's better. Pippa, you're an absolute trap cat. So this is not my best flying in the world, but it's all right. And then we'll pick up this, uh, I can't remember what I keyed in now, 50 degree radial or thereabouts uh, into Compton. I don't know if you can hear a jingle, but... Pretty grim. No autopilot to speak of in this puppy, so it's all going to be by hand, of course. Nice plane to fly this, just a bit torque steery, but that's uh, 
powerful force really in a light aircraft. Very nice, very nice. Just checking my airspace restrictions, all good. Uh, so, because we're VFR, tend to cruise at, um, rather than at thousands of feet, we'll be at uh, 500s. So three and a half thousand feet. However, that cloud looks suspiciously low, so we might have to uh, change that cloud slightly. So we'll lean out for cruise now, and we'll trim for cruise. And yeah, we are going to go down to two and a half thousand. We see the radial coming in. We'll fly straight in towards Compton. So T's and P's are all in the green. I say they're all in the green. Batteries sort of charging up a little bit. Right, there's the radial, so we'll turn towards it now. Right? Can't remember if we've got a DME. Oh, yes, we do have a DME down here. And we've just overshot it ever so slightly. So we'll just turn a little bit past the radial to get it back in line. As you see, the arrow is pointing backwards. So this is uh, an outbound radial that we've actually keyed in. So if you added 180 onto that, obviously the arrow would point forwards and that would be an, uh, an inbound radial. Doesn't really matter. We're going a little, a little bit quick actually. Just going to drop our manifold pressure down to 22. There we are, that sounds a bit better, it's not quite struggling so much. Uh, and let's get our altitude sorted. Right, we're on the radial now, so we can turn towards it. I don't know what the wind's doing, um, but we'll, we'll actually be able to work that out depending on whether we drift off uh, course if our track is slightly wrong. Let's just get a smidge more trim in. Just a nice, uh, nice easy climb. There we go. Cruise speed is looking a bit better. 105 knots. You better not have just chucked that mouse under the wardrobe where I can't get it, cat. You'd be in a lot of trouble. So five miles to go to Compton. What we'll do is we'll. Uh, have a bit of a look, see if we can actually see the VOR when we get there. We should see it on the ground. Still five miles away, yeah. And we're only doing 105 knots. So certainly not as quick as the old airliners. With the ground speed of what? Getting on for 500 knots. Get back on that radial. So it looks like we've got a bit of wind from right to left. Sorry, left to right, because we're drifting to the right of the line. Two point seven miles. We might see the VOR coming up soon. Keep your eyes peeled. We saw what it looked like on a previous video. 
That doesn't look too dissimilar in FSX. It's going to be about the same size as one of these small trees, so it's not going to be, you know, that easy to spot. One and a half miles. Can't quite see it yet. As soon as I do, we'll, uh, we'll drop down and have a look. Slightly off the line. One mile. Where is it? Got it? I'm determined to find that now. a little bit. Uh, pardon me. So we literally flew right over the top of it. Let's go back round for a second pass. Steep turn. It's more or less just off north. I'm, I'm using the moving map just so we can find it a bit easier. I really want to show you. Not that exciting to be honest, but would be nice to see it. More or less, right off the nose. According to Plan G, anyway. But I am not seeing it. Someone with better eyes spot it. And we're more or less dead on top of the thing now. It might be because I've got realistic scenery on. And it's not rendering it. But we should do. We are literally over the top of it. Might be in that forest. That would be funny, wouldn't it? And we're now past it. I wonder, actually... If that is it there, and it's just not rendering it. Because we flew directly over that, because I remember looking at that patch thinking that looks suspect. Let's just see, let's do another steep turn and lose a bit of speed. And let's find that little spot again. And let's see if that's where the VOR drops out. And then we'll know it is definitely that. We've still got the VOR, still got it, still got it, still got it, still got it, still got it. There. Fell over there. So we've literally just gone past it. Come on, slow. Yeah, I bet, I bet it, I bet it was that. Oh well. There we go. Right, so uh, coming out of Compton now. So we want roughly a one seven zero ish radial. So I'm going to spin this round to point at. So there's one five, one six, one seven. Line is to the left of us, so we'll turn a little bit to the left. And we'll climb back up to and we go all the way up to three and a half K. Okay. Five five. Yes, we can go all the way up to three and a half thousand feet and still remain outside uh, 
No space. Right, bear with me two seconds. That you are a disgusting creature. It's all the way back in there. Ah, uh, the talk's there, the talk's there. Back onto that radio. That'll do. Alright, uh, it's nice fish that. Oh, I'm smashing the place to bits. Right then, okay, we're back in the back in the game. A good job the aircraft was reasonably trimmed. Um, let's get ourselves up to a proper altitude. Lead some of that speed off and climb at 100 knots is a bit keen, but we'll get back on track for this VOR. Actually, we need to turn south because there's a bit of restricted airspace there. We just need to dodge. I don't know what it actually is. Older Mastin. You know what Older Mastin is? So there's a mast. What is it? King's Clear. King's Clear. Mast. If we fly towards that, we are uh, then pass the. Uh, I bet it's on top of that hill. Then we are past the, uh, well past the restricted airspace. And we did in inside. Okay, that's a decent climb speed. Just trim for that. And we're almost at whatever the mast is. And again, for some reason, it's not. You can see the wind pushing us over left to right. Anyway, it will be on top of that hill, I just can't see it. So, we are now past the restricted airspace. That was a bit aggressive, wasn't it? So, let's get ourselves spun round and back onto this radial out of Compton. And then we can put, pick up Goodwood, which is on 11475.
We've only got one nav radio, so um, we can only use one at once. So we can't do an intercept, as it were, between two VORs. Obviously, we can we can flick between the two. So if I put one four seven five on, oh, we can actually pick up good wood at the moment. But we'll we'll just get back onto the course we want to be on, and then we'll flick over to Goodwood. So show you what, what uh, that sort of looks like on Plan G. There we are. So out of Compton on whatever the radial was I keyed in, and then we'll put pick up Goodwood on an inbound radial, keeping clear of that Frimley. Oh, that's Longmore, of course, isn't it? Um, and then that's Bisley down there. No, it's not. That's Bisley there. Bisley, Purbright, Ash. Yeah, it's the old Rangers. Spent many, many a day there. So it's three and a half thousand feet. Almost. Almost, almost. So bring the nose down, keep the power on to get the speed up. And then we'll reduce our power for cruise. Oh. Set up a hotkey for that. Uh, and I've just done typical me and blown straight through the altitude. Much easier in real life because you, you can feel more. Much easier flying in real life than it is on the sim. Or at least I feel, I find it is. So we're almost uh, picking up that radial, so I'm just going to uh, reduce our intercept angle a little bit. so we don't oscillate around it quite so much. Gives us a bit of an idea of what the wind's doing um, as well, because we may have to not have, not be going in exactly the direction of the arrow if the wind is pushing us over. So bring the power back, 22. On the pressure is good for me. Smidge of trim. Can we see it? There we go. There's RAF Odium. Those cadets, that's, that's Odeon there. I can't remember what they have there. Is it Chinooks? Is it Ch helicopters for Odeon? Um, we're almost on this radial now, so we're almost on the uh, course we want to be on and then we'll see what our track is doing. So our course is the line on the map that we want to follow. Our track is where we actually go. Of course, our heading doesn't necessarily follow either the track or the course, because we have to take into account wind. As you can see, this radial is not really coming in much, even though I'm, I'm you know, good what? 20 degrees left of it uh, on the heading. That's probably because we've got wind. So we're fighting against the wind here. So our track is probably roughly following the radial, even though our heading is actually 20 plus degrees off. Thank you. 
There we go, we're on the, so we're on the radial there. So now we're on the radial, we can flick over to Goodwood. 26 miles to go. And what sort of radial do we want now? Good word, let's just eyeball this. 330 is probably as good as any. In fact, right, okay, let me show you this. I can spin this until the line is in the middle, and that tells us what radial we're currently on. That makes sense. So we're roughly on a radial of 160. So that's an inbound radial, of course. We want it the outbound. We can just spin that round 180 degrees. And now we can see the arrows pointing on 330-ish. Wasn't wasn't far off then. The white triangle is telling us which direction it is to the VOR, so it's in front of us currently. Uh, and the, the yellow arrow tells us whether we're on an inbound or an outbound radial. Uh, that cloud is definitely below me. So let's uh, drop down a bit. The beauty of a grob tutor is we can do a nice little corkscrew. Nice easy way of losing a thousand feet. A good cork screw should bring you out 90 degrees off. That was maybe 70 degrees off. But I wasn't using rudder because I'm too lazy to put my feet on the pedals. Come on, there we go. So stay on that radio radial into Goodwood. So view our nav here. And we'll retrim for this altitude when I actually get us up to two and a half thousand feet. Lost a smidge more than I wanted. Got a Ryanair behind us at ah, 35,000 feet. That's not a problem. Just going to reduce. Throttle down to 22. There we go. And we're just drifting off the radial, so we've got a bit of wind from left to right. Just turn ever so slightly into the wind there. I think we can almost see the sea. Don't smoke, it's disgusting. Oh, just going through a wee smidge of cloud there. Might have to drop down a touch more. Because uh, we are flying VFR. T's and P's, all good. I think that is cloud, it's not the engine smoking because T's and P's are good. GT's a smidge high if anything, but I'm not uh, overly used to flying a variable pitch prop. I've never done it in real life. Um, flew the, flew the. Oh, did I? Oh wait a minute! I've got this the wrong way round. The the Heron is one five. 
a grob without variable pitch and the tutor does have variable pitch so yes we're in the tutor yeah of course we are god blimey um i flew the heron because you can't go solo in a variable pitch uh, on your flying scholarship can we almost see the sea out there i think we can Come on, sort your altitude out. So, local Q&H, just keep an eye on that, 1027, so that's dropped a smidge, 567, there we go. What is this absolute gravy train of flybees? on my map. Oops. So ETA 1148 is currently 1135. I'll sort your altitude out because my train is not very good. And much more trend. How are we doing on fuel? Hardly used a drop. Uh, and the right tank's a bit more empty, so we'll flick over to the left tank just to get ourselves balanced out a little bit although actually having a bit more in the left tank is probably a good idea because the weights I've got come on there we go uh, I've only accounted for my weight in this seat so no student um, so we probably do want a little bit more weight in, on the left wing you we see we're drifting more and more off course so it must be a reasonable wind uh, actually look at the wind <laughs> 0, 4, 0, 15 knots uh, let me just pull these screens out you can hear the cat trying to get in Lots of cat flap, so she can't bring that mouse back in. There we go, we're picking that radial up again. If I had a flight computer, <laughs> I would uh, obviously calculate the wind and what our heading should be, but. Uh, I haven't got one. There are online ones, I'm, I'm just not using it. Flight computer is like a, it's like a protractor mixed with a compass that doesn't point north. Then yeah, Google it. Really cool bits of kit if you know how to use them. Back on the radial now. Season is good. Fuel's good. Back to this rate, we'll be able to do the whole lesson and get back up to Booker, Wickham Airport, without refueling. That'd be nice. Thank you. 
So I know the wind's coming from 040, which is absolutely off the left side. So we're just going to point slightly into wind rather than going straight towards it. And uh, basically wing it and hope that uh, we've guesstimated good enough to uh, hit the, the right heading to remain on the course that we want to be on, which is around about 155 into Goodwood on the inbound radial. You can see Goodwood. Goodwood is uh, Chichester Airfield, which is down there. So you can see how we're not pointing towards it, but we are going towards it. But we're actually getting pushed slightly to the right of it. So we'll turn a little bit more into wind. And then from Goodwood, we'll just keep on this uh, course to the coast, and then we'll follow the coast until we get to Shoreham, which is probably not too far off there-ish. And should we do a military circuit join? I think we might. In a grob, which is quite funny. See if we can get ourselves up to 6G. That'd be nice. We'll do that for as long as there's no traffic at, at uh, Shoreham. We'll do that. Because it's a military joint procedure, and if there's civil traffic there, they'll, they'll go nuts. They won't know what, what on earth is going on. So you see we're, you know, on the VOR, we're more or less bang on the radial here. It's a good wood, which is here. So you can see how the wind is affecting us. Labour that point a bit more. So how's your Saturday going? My birthday today. Nice birthday cross-country flight. Nice and relaxing. Now if we're flying sort of properly every now and then, I'd be looking round, I'd be doing turns, I'd be dropping the nose to see what's below the nose. Uh, and so on and so forth, but as I say, um, we're not really following proper, you know, the, the proper way to fly here. This isn't a, a lesson in how to fly well, we're, we're just doing a, a casual simulator, not really uh, more playing a game flight to position ourselves down at shore and for the lesson, which I'll record uh later this afternoon and then uh which will be the lesson that will go live uh today saturday um and then we'll do um the return flight uh back up to wiccan uh as a bonus bonus flight So there's Goodwood down there. So we're just going to fly straight out to the sea and then follow the coastline. Uh, and we will hit shore up. So, then, you know, perfectly valid way of navigating. Again, using landmarks, using features, this feature being the coastline. And we know that Shoreham is uh, on the coast. And we know from the map that if we fly straight to the coast from Goodwood, and then follow the coast east, we will fly straight uh, straight past Shore and, so, and we will see it. There's Goodwood. Chichester, should I say. Goodwood's the name of the VOR. Might be the name of the airfield as well, actually, I'm not sure. Ah! The VOR is there. Now, is there actually going to be a radio on it? 
You really see how we're crabbing sideways on the wind here. I'm not sure. Or is that actually just a helipad? Where's the VOR? I used to be able to see them, but I, I must say I've not looked for them since uh, getting uh, UK scenery, Orbex UK scenery. I have fixed all my scenery issues, by the way. They, they should all be working now, so we shouldn't get a recurrence of what happened at uh, Heathrow. <laughs> No, then. Shoran does have a DME. Oh, it has an MDB as well. I didn't realise it had an MDB. But the DME is on 109.95. So that'll tell us how far away from Shoran we are. 17 miles. Um, how do I do a do the ADF on here? Can I do an ADF? Does this even have an ND an ADF for NDBs? No, it does not. Ha! Huh. Did not realise that. Right, well, we'll have to do another lesson then on a in a Cessna, so we can uh, so I can show you the NDB side of things. So down to the coast, then we'll handrail the coastline, keep the coast on our right hand side. So we hit Shoreham. As you can see, that's about 16 miles uh, in a straight line. And we'll be flying roughly into wind. So our ground, you'll see our ground speed, which you can hopefully see down here at the bottom of the screen. You'll see our ground speed re uh, reduce, but our airspeed will stay around about 110 knots. 105 knots, something like that, which is on here. So we're still outside of controlled airspace, we will be for the whole thing. Uh, Shoreham is inside a zone, but we're going to be below the zone. So nothing we have to worry about. And now we're purely visual, not, not using the VOR at all now. We could have done a radial out of Goodwood straight into Shoreham, but uh, we, we can actually see it now. So. Winds 042, 15 knots. Nearly there, nearly there. As per usual, my altitude is all over the place, never mind. But to be honest, we can start uh, thinking about descending fairly soon. So I'm not too, too worried. Quite time, 52 minutes so far. Just try and keep the uh, coastline on our right hand side. Normal VFR rules if you're hand railing something, so if you're following like a motorway, a road, railway, coastline, uh, you always stay on the left of it, so you, you keep it on your right hand side. So if someone else is doing the same coming the other way, you, you, you pass rather than <laughs> head on. Sure. 
was time that somewhere. Not quite rendered in yet, unless we zoom in. No, it's not quite rendered in yet. There is no traffic at Shoreham, so we will do a, a military circuit join, join by our initials. Which is quite good fun. <laughs> a bit daft in a little light aircraft like this, you don't really have the speed to do do it, but you'll, you'll get an idea. We'll do it in a Hawk or something one day, or a Harrier. Yeah, I've got a decent uh, Harrier model we can use. And of course do aerobatics in a grob, um, but in a simulator it's a bit, uh, it's a bit weird, it's quite hard to do them in a sim. Um, value to it either. Uh, FSX doesn't particularly model non-linear flight dynamics very well. X planes a lot better uh, for that. But still, in a sim, it is. It's not really any huge value in doing uh, aerobatics. What other views have I got? Oh, none. <laughs> answers that question then. And we'll put joystick cam on for the uh, for the circuit join in landing as well, why not? So you see our ground speed has reduced. Not a huge amount. as we're flying into the wind. 8.4 track miles to go. And we're almost flying directly at shore. I mean, it's not actually on the coast, it's inland, just a smidge. But uh, that gives you a rough idea. ETA 11.55, it's currently 11.52. I can almost see it, it's down there somewhere. It's this, so you see this ridge of sort of hills? It, it's to the right of those hills as we look. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's before this river as well. But uh, it's a long time since I've been here. In fact, I could have a look on Black Jacob. We're just flying over this city or town, I suppose, is Worthing. If anyone's from that area. Is that it down there? Can I can I just about see it? Off the nose? Yes, I think I can see a little grass strip there. There's a, a tarmac strip, single tarmac strip, and then there's uh, a couple of grass strips as well. Uh, we could land on grass if we wanted to. 
but uh, we'll go for the tarmac. Uh, I forget what the runway number is, but it's it's just off north from memory. Zero three or zero six or something. I've just lost the coastline, so we drifted over a smidge more than I would like. There's no traffic, BFR traffic to worry about though. There it is. Five track miles. Yeah, we can just sort of see the runway there. So, landing lights can come on. Fuel pump's been on the whole time. Whoops, the daisies. Um, and we can start bringing the power back a touch uh, and bring our uh, altitude down. So we just bring the speed back and keep the nose more or less where it was and we'll just slowly uh, descend because our airspeed's a bit lower. I'm the trim for that as well. So let's click on joystick cam. For some reasons, the other side of the screen. Why is that happen then? We've even got some pappy lights there just to the left of the nose. Don't know what the circuit joint altitude is at Shoreham, but we'll uh, we'll go for around seven hundred feet. See Sean down that. Just give it a smidge more mixture. And we'll join on the dead side. The right hand side, I assume they do a left hand circuit here. I don't actually know. So, Golf, Mike, Lima, Tango, November. Uh, Shoreham traffic, Golf, Mike, Lima, Tango, November. Joining via initials, runway three. So on the dead side, so that's the side of the runway opposite the circuit. 500 feet looks reasonable. Fly halfway down the runway. Sorry about that noise, that's the hoover. And then hard turn in a jet, you would kill the power here. But uh, we are not. Actually, we don't want to turn too, too hard. I'm 
Sean Trophy, Golf Tango November, downwind to land. On to base. Over the beach. Nice. Um, oh, my button's just done straight to landing flat. That's brilliant, thank you. Mixture fully rich. And we'll trim for approach. Storm traffic, Gulf, Tango, November, final, zero, 03. Not too worried about puppy lights, um, not too bothered about a three degree approach, although we are a smidge low actually. Extended threshold, so just make sure we uh, don't land too early. Power back, hold the nose just above the horizon. Huge lag spike. 42, that's not too bad. Smidge of brakes. Full ripples on the prop. I don't actually know whether we can go left here. Yes, we can. And um, we'll lean the mixture for taxi. Beacon light to red. Transponder can come to ground. ourselves back onto the taxiway rather than taxiing across the grass. There's a helipad. And we would do our run down checks here but yeah, it's the same being mega lazy. Flaps up. <laughs> what is that? Is there a building just not rendered in? <laughs> That's hilarious. and spots. Come on, leg spike, thank you. Oh, come too many. Uh, Jenny can come off. Parking brake set. And battery is off. And there we are. Nicely down at uh, shore and ready for the lesson. Hope you enjoyed. See you a bit later.